Today, in an ancient village a world away from Australia, a journey begins. A journey which will impact on every Australian life. It's a journey that will end on our doorsteps, on the day that the greatest peacetime event on Earth comes back to our country. Today, the sun that burns over the village of ancient Olympia will reignite a 3,000-year-old tradition born out of Greek mythology, the lighting of one of the world's most sacred symbols, the Olympic flame. Today, the most honourable of Olympic symbols will burst to life from this historic site, and in one month from now, it will arrive in our heartland. For 3,000 years, the Olympic flame has represented honesty, purity, and the highest of ideals. Soldiers would lay down their arms and come here to compete in a spirit of peace, in one single race, a 200 metre sprint the length of the stadium. These days, there's 28 sports in the Olympics and a whole host of champions. And when the Olympic flame arrives at Uluru on June the 8th, it will call on the world's best athletes to come and compete in that spirit of peace and unity in the games of the 27th Olympiad. So while so much has changed, so much remains the same. To walk in Olympia is to walk in the footsteps of gods. One of the great legends has it that Zeus started the Olympic Games to commemorate his victory over Kronos, his father, which established his leadership. 800 years before Christ, King Aphetos, the leader of this region, got all the warring armies together and they agreed to lay down their arms in a sacred truce so that they could carry out the Olympic Games. They would do so every four years. It's said that Alexander the Great would free any conquered enemy if he knew that they'd competed at the Olympics. For these Olympics were not just about athletes, they were about poets and philosophers. They were about the greatest ideals of humanity. And no matter how far we may stray from those ideals, there's always an Olympic torch to remind us just what the Olympics are all about. lady who's uh, beginning the ceremony, the torch lighting ceremony. She actually lit the torch, Tracy, 1936. Yes, the high priestess <laughs> way back then, and she's been choreographing this ceremony since uh, 1968. Maria Horse is her name. She's been involved with the uh, National Ballet here in Greece for some time. The Vestal Virgins. And the virgins have been chosen to, to maintain, to make sure that the, the flame is never extinguished. The high priestess sits in the temple of Hera. The high priestess, of course, these days played by um, an actor, Thalia Prokopayou. The temple of Hera was the first temple inside Olympia. This beautiful, sacred grove full of olive trees, pine trees, sits between two rivers. Hera, of course, was uh, the queen goddess. She was the wife of, of Zeus, of course, who was the ruler of all gods. And I suppose you'd say the, the spiritual father of, of the Olympics. Patron deity of the Olympics. And they chose Olympia to be the home of the Olympics because they described it, the gods described it, as the most beautiful place on earth. Well, I have to vouch for that. Spending time here, you can't help but be moved by this place. It just is such a tranquil, tranquil valley and it just uh, is so much in harmony with, with the land around it. And when you spend any time here, you can't help but be caught up in that spirit, can you? Amazing too that it just exudes peace. As you say, the tranquility. You walk in, you feel peace. Mm. And that was what the Olympics were meant to be about. Soldiers laid down their weapons to come here and compete in a spirit of peace. It's interesting that during the 20th century, we actually um, cancelled the Olympics so that we could make war. This goes to show how far off track we've actually come, doesn't it? And the Olympic Committee these days does have an Olympic truce, which each of the 200 member nations have signed. And they're supposed to go about it uh, quite strongly and encouraging their governments to always maintain peace during the fortnight of an Olympic Games. As you can see there, we just saw the, the parabolic uh, dish um, which catches the sun's rays and ultimately um, the flame will be lit from that, uh, from that dish. The 
This is this the is high priestess. Thalia Prokopiou, who's a Greek actress playing the role of, of the high priestess. So she'll make her way to the parabolic mirror and then call on Apollo, the god of the sun, to send down his rays. Συντροφεύσει ο φίβο, ο φωσφόρο βασιλεύ. Απόλωνα, θε του ήλιου και τη ιδέα. The high priestess there, Tracy, honoring um, the goddess here and calling on Apollo to, uh, to light the flame. So she circles the mirror and looks at each of the Vestal Virgins, whose job it is to maintain the flame so that it never goes out. And it burns eternally at the IOC Museum in Lausanne. be a tense moment though, wouldn't it? Well, it's a wonderfully spiritual moment for them, isn't it? They, their gods live really, don't they? They're human deities and, and they speak of them as if they were real people. The mirror is actually wiped with an oil and then by putting the silver torch in to reflect the sun's rays, it sooner or later will burst into flame. Little bit of haze in the sky today. There's so much suspense here, isn't there? People are just waiting on, waiting on this moment. <laughs> 
And I think each of the Nature Vestal takes virgins its time. <laughs> are praying to the gods and goddesses again in case they didn't hear the call the first time. It was interesting during a rehearsal, which was a much warmer day than this, of course, but um, a little most immediately, didn't it? But it was very warm yesterday. would have to have been close to 30, maybe low 30s. A very cool breeze blowing across the valley today. Making the High Priestess's job a little more difficult than it was yesterday. You see the Temple of Hera in the background and, and the stones immediately to the right of the High Priestess is where uh, the flame was lit so many years ago, 3,000 years ago, before they lit the, uh, the great sacrifice to Zeus. They put plenty of oxen into the pit and there was only one race back then in the Olympics. It was a race the length of the stadium, about 200 metres, measured by Hercules himself. <laughs> And uh, it was the winner of that race that got the honour of taking the torch to light the sacrificial fire. There's the haze, as we can see. And as you say, such expectation for the people on the hill, on the banks of this ancient stadium. It's ironic, isn't it? The sun has been shining so strongly uh, for the last few days. It's been. No shortage of it, but just duck behind a cloud now for, uh, for the last few minutes. But undoubtedly, they wait a long time for this torch to light. They're not going to worry about a few minutes now, are they? I wonder if they've ever waited so long, in fact, for the torch to light. So there's the flame of the new millennium. In fact, this candle was lit yesterday. And that is the precautionary measure. Of course, that was lit by the, the raw flame, the natural flame from the sun. It's a very simple ceremony, isn't it? And I think that's its, its real strength. Tracy, that it hasn't been overtaken by commercialism. There are no marching bands there. There are no fireworks there. It's just a very simple, a very sacred ceremony, I'd imagine, done in much the same way it was done 3,000 years ago. What is beautiful is that there is only one thing your eye is attracted to, and that is the flame. And it makes you stop and ponder and think about the relevance of the Olympic Games and mm. what that flame means as it burns in the cauldron of each Olympics. And it's about unity, it's about coming together, it's about friendship. One of the wonderful stories that has attracted me since I've been here was a story that the mostly, uh, mostly Greek soldiers who would compete in the Olympics would come here and they'd be trained by poets and philosophers. What a wonderful thought. Athletes being trained by poets and philosophers and of course Plato and Aristotle used to come here and, and watch the games. Such a wonderful history. Alexander the Great, his father, won one of the, uh, the horse races in, in the Olympics. And Nero, of course, one of the stars of the Olympics of his own making, wasn't he? <laughs> when the Romans finally conquered the Greeks. Well, now the team will move forward and the candle that you saw will make its way over the hill into the ancient stadium. And awaiting there will be the first runner of the Sydney 2000 torch relay. He's standing by anxiously, Lambros Papakostas, the Greek high jump champion. 
it's a wonderful moment for him and it's you, know, you stop to think they are the first steps on the road to Sydney 2000 it's such a such an incredible moment